I want to talk about content creator type laptops. Once a year, I'm contacted by several manufacturers, as I'm sure many other tech channels out there are, and we are asked, what would be the ideal content creator laptop for you? And this is a great question for me because I do live the laptop life. I do not have a desktop and being a YouTuber for the last three years, there's a lot of things out there that I would like to see either improved upon or changed altogether. The first one, first two actually, starting with the webcam and microphone. The webcam and microphone need to be improved upon as far as location, quality, and how the microphone picks up audio. Some manufacturers do this better than others, but more important than ever, many people are working from home. Many people need that video conference time. As a matter of fact, the CEO from Twitter just earlier this week stated that all of his employees, ex the exception of those that of course have to maintain the servers and things like that, can work from home permanently, even post this pandemic. And I have a feeling that it's not going to be just this one company that does this, but we are going to see a growth of the stay at home employee. And a lot of those individuals are gonna have to check in with work, do some Skype, some video conferencing. Heck, a friend of mine is a computer programmer. He's working from home. He's invested quite a bit into lighting, acoustic foam, video cameras, things like that. It's a little extravagant, but he does like to go big or go home. Now, when it comes to the video webcam, microphone, the placement, it's gotta be up top, right? Nobody's gonna wanna be looking up the nostrils. A dual array microphone, something that can block out ambient noise, of course, would be ideal. I am aware that the quality of this is not going to even match what we would see on a cell phone. There's a lot of post-processing and just software that goes into those still images and video just to make it look a little bit better. A lot of these webcams are probably connected via USB 2.0. So there is limitations there, but at least make the microphones decent enough to block out any ambient sounds and put the webcam up top. And let's start with that. Number three, ports. Port selection is very important as a content creator, and I'm gonna to try to speak for the masses here in the simplest way possible and just cover two ports and then one part about the port location. Full-size SD cards, probably a must here, right? Especially if you're into photography, you're using the DSLR cameras, you wanna be able to pull this card out, put it in your laptop and transfer the data. It's very simple, simplicity is key. However, not all card readers are equal. We have ultra high speed one, two, and three. Now the fastest card reader laptop that I have here would be both Aero 15s using an ultra high speed two, much faster than UHS one. UHS one is a dog. I would not want to have to transfer several gigabytes of data using something like this. It would be horrifying. Not to mention the max line here uses the micro SD card. Can you see that? I mean, that is very inconvenient. I'm happy that it's here. It's better off that it's here than to not be here. But moving forward, manufacturers making content creator laptops, Razer is the only one doing this right, right now, offering ultra high speed three card solutions. Even if you don't need it, the fact that it is there, I appreciate. Now me, I don't need it. I don't use a DSLR. I actually video everything with my smartphone. That's what we're using right now. And then I plug that in via USB-C, transfer it that way. Where my big files, when they are transferred from the machine that I am reviewing onto the machine that I use to edit, I use an external NVMe enclosure. And this is where that other port comes into play, very important to me, Thunderbolt 3. Now, USB-C is pretty fast. Thunderbolt 3 should be about four times faster. Now, granted, inside this small housing, the NVMe drive does throttle a little bit, meaning in a nutshell, it's probably twice as fast as USB-C. Nonetheless, I can now take 20 gigabytes of data on the unit that I'm reviewing, pull it off there, put it on here, and then transfer it onto my editing rig in about 60 seconds. That's very convenient. Steven from Owner Disown and I, we were just talking about this earlier this week. He doesn't utilize this solution. What he has to do takes a lot longer. And when he makes his transfer of all those files onto his editing device, he'll usually go and walk his dog. Now he is able to work that solution into his routine, but for me, that doesn't work. This is my solution. What does that mean? Full-size card readers, Ultra High Speed 3 and Thunderbolt 3 are pretty dominant ports to have 
for people who create content on laptops. It may not be for everyone, and me personally, I only rely on one of those ports, and ultimately I can still get by on USB-C, but there is a place and a purpose for those ports. Now let's move on to port placement. Out of all of the manufacturers, I do find, generally speaking, Asus to have the best port placement is they put a lot of their dominant ports on the left side of the laptop and they try not to clutter the right side too much. Now MSI with their new GS66 series stealth laptop, they were kind enough to flip the motherboard back in its proper orientation, but as a result, a lot of the heavier duty ports are on the right hand side. Having the local area network port, maybe the fat HDMI ports on the right hand side with your mouse hand can get a lot of clutter on that side. Not ideal. So manufacturers, be very mindful of your port placement, especially when it comes to the heavier duty ports. I would give MSI a pass here on that laptop because I would prefer to have the motherboard set up in its correct orientation. And then if that means I have to sacrifice heavier ports on this side, perhaps that's something you can work on with the revision of the next generation of that particular laptop. Nonetheless, heavy duty ports, keep them away from the right hand side, maybe place those in the back or on the left hand side as far as the right hand side goes. Just basically what we have here, power with an L shape, that's fine, ideally in the back, USB ports, maybe Thunderbolt, decent on the right hand side, card reader, acceptable, stuff that's not going to be overly bulky, heavier duty ports, keep them out of the way, left or rear. Number four and five, we're going to talk about storage and battery. Now, when we talk about content creator laptops, I know this is a little vague here, but generally speaking, there's gonna be some portability involved, maybe some traveling, and carrying these big bulky laptops around that I would love to edit on. Nothing would make me happier than a big, gigantic, two power supply unit, 17 inch, 10 pound Clevo based chassis to just set in my office and leave it there. But for those that are portable, which is a pretty likely scenario for the content creator who's doing content creation on a laptop, kind of makes sense, we're going to be limited on storage because we want a bigger battery inside of what inevitably is a small laptop. So let's consider the battery 99 watt hours, 100 watt hours, just maximize all the way up to that legal limit. That's kind of a no brainer, especially in 2020. Let's get that going. It's coming around. A lot of these manufacturers are doing this now. So continue to do that and improve on it when you can. As a result, storage is going to be compromised. Those batteries do take up a lot of space. Two M.2s minimum. If you can fit three, great. Uh, what's the M.2 storage right now? Around four terabytes. I think there's an eight that was announced sometime last year, but a somewhat readily available maximum storage size standard M.2 NVMe drive. You're looking at around four terabytes. Therefore, eight terabytes of storage in these devices. That would be pretty good for me. I can fill up a terabyte of storage pretty quickly if I gather 50, 60, 80 gigabytes of data just for one review and I wanna keep that on the laptop and not put it on the cloud, which is ultimately ideal, especially for me. I need a lot of storage. And just know that bigger batteries, smaller laptops, we're not gonna have that two and a half inch drive capability unless something magical happens with the motherboard size and configuration inside of laptops moving forward. And that's probably not going to happen. Now, this one probably the most important to me, being able to screen record, capture the video, what I see within Windows. Maybe I'm shopping around on websites, trying to offer deals videos to you. Maybe I wanna showcase the software on a particular laptop using NVIDIA Shadow Play by pressing Alt F9 is so ideal. It's very efficient and it's very lightweight when it comes to the overall file size. But unfortunately, laptops that have MS Hybrid or Optimus-based solutions, you are unable to do screen recording with Shadow Play. Now, laptops such as the Mac 17 that have a MUX switch that allows me to have the dedicated graphics card, in this case, the 2070 Max P Super, directly connected to the display, I can now screen record with ease. Now, I can and have used OBS Studio. And while that is a decent solution, there's times where it just doesn't work based on a certain Windows update that came through. Or I have to figure out a way to get it to connect to the integrated graphics. Various ways of doing so requires a lot of troubleshooting and time spent on my end. It is not as fire and forget over an extended period of time. Now, right now, it's working for me. Three months ago, it was not. 
The time that I need to spend has to be focused on my videos, on my editing, and in everything else I have going on in my life. If I can minimize the amount of troubleshooting, well, I need to do that. So OBS Studio is not going to be ideal for me on laptops. Now, will the advanced Optimus solutions coming up sometime this year offer that problem solved? Probably, time will tell. Nonetheless, efficiency is key and being able to press Alt F9 and record what I'm looking at is something that I'm always gonna gravitate to. Aspect ratio, 16 by 10. Oh my goodness, as somebody who edits on laptops, having that extra vertical real estate would help my efficiency so much. As I start to run out of room, this is very small and I need to increase the size of this so I can check out the integrity of the video that I am creating, but as I need to stack more layers across my timeline, I'm gonna to have to shrink this back down or move this up. And a lot of times it's really ideal to be able to see my whole entire timeline so I get things lined up. Having a larger screen such as a 17 inch laptop does help but having that 16 by 10 aspect ratio helps even more. And this would be very ideal. Kudos to Dell for their 2020 XPS 15 and 17 for going with that 16 by 10 ratio. So nice work. Moving forward, if you wanna call yourself a content creator laptop, having that 16 by 10 ratio for your display should be mandatory. We are saving the best for last. Here it is, the Ryzen CPUs 4000 series inside of laptops. Now there's two reasons why these are going to be more ideal than Intel, let me explain. Now when it comes to performance standpoint, we've got the 10th generation 10875H, that's eight cores inside of this Max. We've got the 4800H that I have been using for quite some time now. It is great, they trade blows performance wise, but because the Ryzen pulls 30 watts less, when I render videos, it is significantly quieter, which is really nice. So I'm not annoying the people next to me. It's just a really good quality of life to have a much quieter laptop, should I wish. Pretty awesome. But what's even better than that is that when I unplug these laptops and I run them on their battery, the Ryzen gets significantly better performance versus the Intel solutions because of that smaller wattage envelope that it needs to work in in order to obtain maximum performance. Now there's gonna come a time when these are gonna be so efficient that maybe the most wattage that they pull is 25 watts and therefore when we run them on battery, we will get maximum CPU performance at all times. Very similar to how the MacBook Pro has been working ever since, well, I think MacBook Pros have been around. They get full power on battery or when they're on their power supply unit. Windows-based laptops do not, but thanks to Ryzen, we can see that light at the end of the tunnel and perhaps achieve that maximum CPU performance on battery. And as of right now, it's doing a far better job than Intel's finest inside of the mobile platforms. All right, folks, that's gonna do it. I'm Bob of all trades. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, because I've got something really cool to showcase, and it's not what you think. I'll see you in the next video.